Satisfied with your bank? Have you considered a credit union? Midwest America offers about any service you need. The convenience of free mobile banking, debit cards, ATMs, free online banking and bill payer, competitive loans, mortgages, and more. Deposits insured to a half million dollars. Hey, consider this an invitation. Your next bank should be a credit union. Midwest America Federal Credit Union. Midwest America Federal Credit Union. So it appears that good things really do come to those who wait. As the University of St. Francis defensive line nearly doubled its sack total in the 49 to 25 win over Siena Heights. Well, I'll tell you, our defensive line is uh, not real big, but they're athletic and they're quick. And uh, I think Coach Wagner and uh, Coach Wolf do a great job getting them to move and some of the schemes they put them in. Uh, it's tough for people to sit in there and block them. And uh, gosh, Sparks and Thompson, uh, they're going to get after you. Um, Johnson inside and Jones and Himmelgarn uh, got some good football players in, in there that are just doing uh, extremely well and uh, they rush the quarterback extremely well. The Cougars rattled off six of the team's 13 sacks against the pass happy Saints. Oh I think because you're going against a team that throws the ball 90 percent of the time you get yourself in that mindset, you get your calls according to pass pressures and that sort of thing. When teams are balanced, you know, it uh, gets you, you know, you, you have to be ready to defend both. So I think that the fact that, uh, and particularly when they got behind, um, they were going to throw the football, so we were able to pin our ears back and go get them. Inside linebacker Pearson Harnish has been pinning his ears back all season long. He's the team's leading tackler with 46 and is the only non-D lineman to record his sack this past Saturday, his first of the season. Yeah, uh, Carrington Thompson, I think he ended up the game with three. He played very well. Uh, Lucas Sparks, our ends do a very good job at uh, just making plays. And then the D tackles, they uh, do a great job plugging holes and basically getting me and Matt Muncie open just to make plays. And they do a great job. And it's, it's fun to play behind four guys, like, like their talent to just go out and make plays. Even though the sack numbers were down to start the season, Harnish feels a lot of the defense's success is attributed to the D-line. A couple teams like Marion uh, or Taylor, whenever they're in the gun and all they do is snap the ball and they're releasing the ball in two seconds. And I mean, that's the average a quarterback holds on the ball against us because they know the ends are coming so they gotta get rid of it. And I mean, if you look at our, we have four pick sixes this year and that, that's, that goes into how fast we get to the quarterback and that leads the area or the league in pick sixes or touchdowns by defense. And I think that goes into how, make, how fast we make the quarterback throw the ball. And that's why we don't probably have that many sacks. Offensively, the combination of Nick Ferrer to Cam Smith helped the Cougars to a 14-3 lead to end the first quarter. But after a few costly turnovers, St. Francis found themselves only up by two with a 14 to 12 lead. That's when Coach Donnelly turned to true freshman Tyrone Young. We left 21 points on the field. Uh, had one in the red zone, we tried a little gadget play and, and didn't fool anybody. Uh, and then we put the ball on the ground, you know. So, you know, we've got to continue to uh, work on ball security and take care of the football and do the things that we do the best. Um, Justin Green was out last week with injury, uh, so that left us with uh, Aaron Harris and P.J. Dean and T-Rone Young. And uh, T-Rone is, uh, you know, he was on, he was hot. So when somebody's having a, a good day, you want to get him the ball as much as possible. And, you know, he's a strong kid, he's got good vision, he's powerful, he's got speed as well. So uh, people can't arm tackle him. And, uh, you know, we thought that the second level of defense of Siena Heights was probably their weak point and um, trying to get uh, you know those linebackers to tackle him uh, was a real chore for him. Young led St. Francis with 128 yards rushing on 25 carries and three touchdowns while another true freshman Harnish led the defense with 10 tackles. Harnish was a three-sport athlete at nearby Norwell High School and caught the eye of Coach D right away. We knew he was very special his junior year in high school. 
Uh, I've watched him three or four times his junior year, a couple times his senior year, but I knew way back then that this was a special player that we had to recruit from a good family, good football family. His brother played in the NFL. Uh, and I just knew we had to make every effort we could to get him. And, uh, you know, he's a great student as well. And uh, the, uh, our business EPIC program, uh, those folks in, in that department did a tremendous job in laying out all the opportunities he would have there. So I think, you know, a lot of things went into that decision, uh, not just the football, but I think what he can get uh, with his four-year degree here and uh, the opportunities that, that he would get in his major area. He's a good football player, no question about it. There is no doubt that Pearson left an impression at Norwell and its football program. And when it was time to choose a college to play ball, he wanted to play for a winner. I mean, let's just go back to, like, that's the reason I came to St. Francis. I mean, you look at their history, like you said, they, they've only had football for less than 20 years, and they've put up amazing statistics and just, they win. And I love going to, going from, I mean, being about 500 in my last couple seasons at Norway, going to, going to start off 6-0. I mean, that's just, I've never been part of a football team that can start off a season that well, and uh, that just, that, that gets me going, and you just, it's just really fun to play with a team that just loves to be out here and just loves to win. Harnish got going right away, being named a starter for the season opener versus Olivet, a game with which he led USF with 11 tackles. Coming in, our coaches said uh, there's only about four linebackers that had any experience, and there's eight freshmen, and he said there has to be a couple freshmen step up and gonna have to play a lot, so, and then we had a couple injuries early in camp, and so that kind of got me into the motion of getting reps with the one and twos, and, and then I uh, got in the books hard, and. I just it rolled from there and I'm just playing my position, play what needs to be done for the team. I think it starts back with uh, my, my brothers when I was younger, I mean, I was also a quarterback and I think reading the, an offense comes into the key where I played offense. So I know what the offense wants to do with the ball and I know where they need to go. Like this week playing against Concordia, they're playing the same offense I ran for four years at Norwell. So I know where this quarterback wants to run the ball and I know where he wants to run the ball. So I think. Playing offense in high school will help me read keys and know where to be on Saturday as playing middle linebacker. Knowing where to be is just one of the intangibles that Coach D likes in Harnish. Well, he also has some uh, natural leadership skills. I uh, don't even know if he realizes it yet or not, but he has an aura about him. Um, he's the guy you want to follow into battle. and. Uh, He's always battle ready, so it kind of, uh, I think, lifts everybody up around him that they're going to get that way too. And Pearson is a bit battle tested off the field as well. After his 2013 accident left him with second degree burns. Well, basically on May 18th, uh, I don't know if you all know, but I was basically just had a brush pile going. I ended up just catching on fire. It was just a very hot day, and I was using a couple elements you shouldn't use on a fire called gasoline. And uh, that caused events that literally catch me on fire. And uh, I end up going to the hospital. Uh, then they end up uh, rushing me by ambulance to St. Joe Hospital. They scrubbed for a couple hours, took all the dead skin off, and then they layered me up. And so I was like that for 18 hours in the hospital. And then the next day was my sister's graduation party and I had to attend it. And I went to the basement and everybody from her graduation party saw her in the garage and they'd come down to the basement and see me. And then uh, I think that's just how it happened. And I got back, it, it took me about two weeks to just finally just to start moving around. And then it, it was just a miracle. Uh, I mean, I, being a Christian, I think uh, that, I mean, I was just a miracle. God, God knew that this situation, I could use it and, and I talk about it and say how uh, lives can change. But, uh, and I also talk about not putting gas on the fire to younger kids too, but. That, that event really changed my life, I guess, for the good. That event shook a lot of people. Harnish received cards from his football rival high school, Carroll, and Indianapolis Colts head coach, Chuck Pagano, who had just finished a fight with leukemia. Pearson's brother, Chandler, was a member of the Colts at the time. I think puts stuff into perspective because, like, you never know when life will just be over for you because they told me if I didn't had dropped, stopped, dropped and rolled and got the fire out because it was on my throat, then uh, 
it would have killed me if because I could have ran and went to, I have a pond I jumped in the pond after I got the fire out they said if I would have just ran first I would have died on the scene because it would have it would have just burnt my throat up throw it up and I couldn't it would have suffocated me so I think it puts stuff into perspective and uh, I think now I just want to like whenever they say play the next play I mean that's huge for me because like I got I'm, I got to live so I get to play the next the day of life so I think that's just huge when it comes to football and life. Football is a big part of Pearson and the Harnish family's life. Following in the footsteps of his older brother Chandler, who is one of the greatest quarterbacks in Northern Illinois University's history, was never a burden. Instead, it helped the six foot one inch, 220 pound linebacker grow as a player and a person. Oh, definitely a blessing. I mean, uh, we have played a different, completely different position, and uh, he, he, uh, he he's been a great teacher and. Uh, I just think coming from a background of football, I mean, I have another brother that's 30 and he played linebacker at Manchester. So I've got aspects of linebacker. So I had to know how to play linebacker I know when I was in high school. And then Chandler being a quarterback also teach me how to be a quarterback. And uh, I think it's just been a blessing just to have both those guys teaching me football and just teach me how to just be a good man. And uh, saying that even if you have a good game, your offensive line had a better game. If you have a great game at linebacker, your defense line is the reason why you had a good game. If you have a bad defense line, you're not gonna have a good game either. So the only reason is because of your teammates. So I think that's a blessing to have brothers that mean that much to me and, and then a family that supports. And when the Harnish family gets together and starts talking football, there's always one voice that rises above the rest. My mother is the one that knows the most football in the household. She, she'd sit in that stands on Saturdays here on, when we're playing Concordia and she will tell you what Concordia is going to run even without watching film. She's going to tell you in the third quarter if they're going to run a triple option or they're going to throw the ball. She, is, she knows football and then she'll also tell the refs whenever they don't know football. Coach D can always use an extra set of eyes on game day and rest assured Leanne Harnish will have her eyes set on the field this Saturday as the Cougars take on Concordia. The Cardinals come in with a 4-2 record, both losses coming against nationally ranked teams by a combined 13 points. So it's safe to say these aren't the same Cardinals we've seen in the past. No question, they have lost two ranked good football teams. They beat a number five, St. X, last week, so that gets your attention right away. Uh, they have a good game plan. They're well coached. Um, this gentleman took over a year or two ago and uh, my gosh, you know, I, I knew last year that they were going to be a lot better. Um, they, they play within themselves. They play extremely hard. they got a good plan. Um, they call a lot of uh, plays from a, a sideline. They uh, want to shorten the game with their run game. They're going to snap that thing with two or three seconds. Uh, they want to keep it close going into fourth by playing good defense and controlling the ball. And then they do have some playmakers. Um, Quarterbacks uh, run the ball very well, and I say quarterbacks, they have two. They actually beat St. X with their backup last week, so we don't know who we're going to get, but both of them are, are very good football players. And they got some big play guys out on the perimeter as well, looking around well. They got some transfers along with 20 starters returning. So uh, they're the real deal, and we're going to have to play a great football game. Concordia ranks number one in rushing offense and scoring defense in the MSFA Mideast. So with the weather currently expected to be 46 degrees at kickoff time, sounds like a perfect mix as the regular season begins to wind down. Well, you know, weather's kind of like officials. You don't have much control of them. It's just there and you gotta deal with it. Their, their passing game is more vertical. Um, I mean, they throw some control stuff, but uh, they can check it because they've got some guys that can run it. So. Cold, maybe not so much. Wind, it's a factor. Um, but whatever it is, both teams have to deal with it. You know, we have a, a big play uh, type things that we, we do in our offense. Also feel like we can run the ball and we can control it with a short passing game as well. So uh, it'll be a great football game, no question about it. You know, uh, we have the opportunity with the win to assure at least uh, a piece 
of the conference championship. And who ever thought in the middle of October that would be happening? But we've played our conference games early. We have one at the last game of the season out in Missouri with Mobat. Um, and, and they're struggling right now. They're, they're uh, 0 and 6, I think. So, you know, this is the big game. And then obviously we have a crossover game next week, which we'll talk about next week. So if the Cougars hope to secure their 12th conference title, it starts Saturday. And Harnish knows it'll be a battle taking on the triple option and a Cardinal team that plays snap to whistle for 60 minutes. They'll never give up. That is, I mean, they scored 21 points against St. X in the fourth quarter. That tells you something that they got heart and they are well conditioned and they have probably the best scheme we've seen all year. It's misdirection football. I mean, it is triple option. It's gonna be, if, if one guy misses his assignment, they'll have a 60 yard touchdown. It's just, you can't play another guy's position. If uh, you've got quarterback, you can't play the dive on the fullback. You have to stay quarterback. Even if you know the guy has the ball, you just, you just gotta play your position or 60 yard touchdown be in the other end zone. So we got, it basically comes down to who's gonna, who wants it in the fourth quarter. If, even if you have a 28 point lead, it doesn't matter against this team because they're going to fight you to the death for this because, I mean, they're a newer program and they just got their own field. They're not playing on a high school field anymore and stuff's looking up for this program and, and beating St. Francis, a 6-0 football team in the top 10 would be a big statement for this team to, for recruiting, for everything. So I think we got a big target on our back and I think uh, this game is huge for them, but I think it's even bigger for us.